Hey everyone, my name is Luke and welcome to my channel and as you can probably see I've got a bit of an unboxing session to share with you guys today. I'm very happy to say that finally all the gear for the Rasa has arrived from my great friend Bill. Uh, thanks again Bill by the way, I'm really pleased to be the uh, owner of this scope now but basically I've been putting this off all day, I've had family around, uh, but I didn't want to open it without actually sharing it with all you guys on camera. So uh, without any more delay, let's get straight to it. Well, in truth, this package actually arrived about a week ago and it was making a bit of an odd rustle. So I thought I'd check it out. I haven't actually dragged everything out just yet. So uh, this is a bit of a first look. So I'll turn the camera down and we can take a look at this small packet first and uh, see what arrived. Put all this package to one side. Um, so inside of here we have the, if I can just get this on camera for you, the Celestron Focus Motor for SCTs, Edge HDs, and of course the RASA. Now the Focus Motor isn't actually inside this box right now, it's installed on the scope as far as I'm aware, but the original parts, uh, that is the manual focus knob and such, I imagine are in here because it's kind of heavy, yeah. So that is all that stuff in there in case i ever wanted to return to uh, manually focusing i'll just uh, put this away as best as i can i'll do that properly off camera now bill did include a few more really interesting goodies for me so uh, in here is the celestron lps filter so this one is the one that's intended for the rasa uh, that comes in the kind of proprietary filter cell apparently that's a really high quality filter and i think if I'm not mistaken they're actually made by uh, Astrodon so uh, that should be impressive to use I'm really looking forward to trying that thing out um, inside here Bill basically purchased another of those filter cells the uh, the kind for the Rasa proprietary system and included inside of it instead an Altair quad band filter it's a quad band pass uh, kind of narrow band filter but apparently because it's got kind of wider um, band passes. I hope you can see me on camera here. It actually plays fairly well with the uh, kind of shift that happens at high uh, speeds. So again, this thing's ready. It can just be kind of screwed in. It could also be changed over into a normal 48 millimeter filter, uh, filter cell. Where else do we have in here? So uh, a bit more packaging to keep this from rattling around. All right, so... Uh, just screw this off. Here is the uh, Starizona filter slider system designed for the uh, the Rasa once again with a draw. So that's uh, a way I can get normal 48 millimeter, you know, the two inch uh, filters into this system. That's an interesting bit of kit. I think I'll certainly be making some use of that. I'll put that to one side. Um, this is the one with felt on it. So from what I've read online, this is the original um, Celestron part that should maybe terminate in M42, I think, on that side. Let's take a look a little bit deeper. So, uh, yeah, Bill said he'd included me a couple of small spaces to help me get the back focus correct. So hopefully the camera's focusing on that for you there. Uh, I think that is probably a 10 mil and a five mil spacer they certainly will be handy. Uh, with one of those five mils there, I could change the uh, player one camera that I'm likely to be using into effectively the same back focus as the ASI cams of 17.5. Um, now, this is another Celestron kind of OEM part. Um, as far as I'm aware, this is kind of the C-mount thing. So I can put a small guide camera or something on the end and use it for accessing all the collimation bolts. Uh, on the front of the Rasa. So larger cameras would block those collimation bolts, making it almost impossible to actually do collimation with the camera in place as your mentor. Uh, whereas if I put a small camera on, like my maybe one of my planetary cameras or something like that, I'll be able to reach those bolts, perform collimation, and then switch this out to the larger part, kind of like this one. I hope that's making sense. Um, now, this is an interesting thing. So before I actually get that out, I'll show you, uh, here is the other, empty um no this is not empty actually i'm totally wrong this is the filter glass i do believe again in one of those uh proprietary kind of screwing parts for the rasa itself so that'll be another oem part this is part of another uh, deal we had going on together uh this is just a small ha filter which i'm going to be using for an 
a different project entirely. That's to do with uh, something else. Um, oh, this is the uh, the quad band filters, uh, actual normal filter cell. You see, there's nothing in that right now. So uh, if I wanted to change that, I'll tear the quad band out and put it inside that. I could do. Now, interestingly enough, this is the part that Bill uh, 3D printed himself for the Rasser. He's also put this uh, felt lining around the inside. I'll try and get some better camera angles for you there, sorry. But hopefully you can see it's got a little cooling fan, I guess to uh, disperse any boundary layer effects that might be happening from that corrector plate on the front. Uh, and it looks to be that if you fit this on the Rasser, of course, you can also use it in conjunction with this which is like a cable management system so you can see the cables go along the inside of that which should stop any of those kind of uh, almost violent looking diffraction spikes that can be uh, a commonplace feature in rasa images now this looks awesome and i will be using this i think it also seems to have some small cutouts uh, maybe the original kind of cover for the Celestron uh, Rasa could go on the end and keep this thing free of dust getting on the corrector plate. So I'll put this, I think that's everything. So I'll put this to one side now. All right, guys, so this is the one, the actual Rasa itself is in this box. And this is the one that just arrived today. So uh, this part of the shipment obviously came uh, a lot later. I think it was delayed by the uh, Jubilee celebrations in this country. Um, let me just get some scissors, oops. Okay, that should be good. And uh, let's get this thing carefully unboxed. Really nice to see that it's actually came double boxed. Oh, <laughs> wow, that looks nice. Let me get these scissors away from this. Wow. All right, so, um, Let's take a look what do we have in here so very kindly he's included uh, a Jew strap and a Jew controller the Astro Zap made in the USA dual channel Jew controller all as part of the deal again I just can't thank you enough Bill uh, I'm really grateful for this uh, this deal you've put together man um, now then wow that thing is pretty Oh yeah. Okay, I think I'm gonna uh, just try and lift this out as gently as I possibly can and I'll get Chloe to uh, move the box for me a second. Can you just uh, help me with that please, Chloe? So it seems like all the uh, kind of wiring loom has been very kindly left in place for me here, which is gonna save a lot of headaches. That's heavier than it looks. You just get that box for me. Thanks, Chloe. So I'll put this down on here a second. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I'm pretty stunned. That's, uh, you know when something just feels quality, I'm sure you're all, uh, you're all well aware of what that feels like. Well, this is giving me that feeling. Um, it's got such a kind of a heft to it, which is uh, interesting. I mean, you read the specs online and you kind of see what it should weigh, etc. But once you get it in hand and you feel how kind of solidly built and put together it all feels to be, uh, it's entirely a different thing. So I've just got to take a look down the end. You know, it's the law. Okay. Wow. So, uh, oh man. That's nice. I'm gonna have to turn this around for you and uh, give you a quick peek. Oh yeah. <laughs> this thing is nice. And on the back there, as we mentioned, you can see uh, there is the Celestron focus motor too, all uh, hooked up and ready to go. And the USB uh, hub as well. She keeps getting better. My word. Well, I think the next thing to do is kind of just sit here and marvel 
at this new piece of equipment, which I'm so thankful to own and so excited to start using. And uh, the next thing, I guess, after I've uh, just reveled in its glory for a little bit is to get it on the uh, on the mount, I guess, because there is a very small chance uh, I might be able to just test it through some thin clouds tonight. Um, you can see the moon just about, but it is uh, really pretty covered as it happens. First light will probably come uh, towards the end of this week uh, by the looks of the weather forecast. So unless it changes, I will be keeping my eye on it every single day. Uh, but you can bet as soon as possible, I'll be sharing my first session from this thing with all of you guys. So uh, I think that's about everything that I've got for you today. I hope that you've enjoyed joining me uh, on this little unboxing. I just couldn't, I kind of help but want to share it with all of you because uh, you become such an important part of my uh, astronomy journey and life at the moment actually as it happens so thank you very much indeed to each and every one of you guys and uh, i think we'll just leave it there so thanks so much for watching and until next time close guys